So you're looking for Scotland's wilder side. Well, I think you're going to like this trip to the Isle of Jura. Here are some of the highlights of what's coming up. Morning everybody, uh, apologies for the bright light shining off my big bald head. It's a very chilly start here, it's about 7 in the morning and we're at minus 2, minus 3, I can see my breath. The plan today is we're going to head across to the Isle of Jura, but there is snow forecast um, for today across the west coast, so we might not even get there, and then the next two days is just sheet rain, I think. Uh, so, who knows, we might see nothing, but we're going to try and... Hopefully you're going to enjoy it. You'll find Jura off Scotland's west coast. To get there it takes two ferries. The first from Kenna Craig on the mainland, around three and a half hours from Edinburgh. I was leaving from Dunfermline, which takes roughly the same amount of time. Across the Kincardin Bridge, with torrential rain on the motorway through Glasgow, along the bonny bonny banks of Loch Lomond, with a snowy Ben Lomond looking on, then a mini blizzard as we climbed to rest and be thankful, till eventually I reached the wee town of Inverary perfect spot to check Scotland's Gritter Tracker. Stop to check what we got, Sleepwood Knack. Now we don't want to get my own hopes up, but there is a little bit of sunshine I can see along further down Loch Fine, so might get lucky. Touch wood. Look at that. Beautiful. Someone's out kayaking out there. Mad person. Thankfully, the conditions took a turn for the better. So before long, we made it to the Calmac ferry terminal at Kenna Craig where our vessel awaited. Well, we survived the drive from Dunfermline to Kenna Craig. So this is where the ferry leaves from um, to Isla. The ferry is actually called the Finn Lagan, which is a really important spot on Isla. Not doing a video on Isle, I'll do that video another time, but that is where the Lords of the Isles, the Clan MacDonald, had their base. So, there's a fighter plane going right over our head. That was unexpected. So, just, just wait till that's done. It's doing a loop around. Right, now the plane is gone. So, we're going to do now, we're going to get the ferry, two hour ferry over to Isla, uh, and from there, we're going to wait about 25 minutes, half an hour, and get the ferry over to Jura, which is only five minutes, it just runs back and forward and back and forward all day. Um, and it's just something about getting two ferries somewhere that makes it feel like a bit more of an adventure, you know what I mean? Feeling a bit more optimistic um, with the weather just now. Dark clouds, but. As long as we don't get an awful lot of snow, I think we're going to have a pretty good couple of days on Jura. Now the first thing you'll want to do on board is grab some lunch. The food on Calmac Ferries is always pretty decent, but with no dogs allowed in the restaurant, it's a bit of a novelty for me. And something to make up for the fact that Molly isn't here on this trip. It's not a bad view either, as we sail out of West Loch Tarvert. Time to head out on deck and feel the wind rushing through my hair. Well, you, you know what I mean. I don't know if you can hear me, this is pretty noisy up here in the deck of the ferry, but we left Kenna Craig behind, we're about an hour into the journey, that's Jura. Over there, with the packs. Packs in the clouds. I'm not alone on this trip either, I've got, here's Rob, Rob Car Tours. I highly recommend it. This seems like the perfect time to give you a very brief background on the Isle of Jura. Now this island is home to roughly 200 people and 6,000 deer. The name itself is thought to come from Norse for Deer Island. It's dominated by three large hills known as the Paps of Jura. And hiking those is a whole day event, something I'll hopefully come back in summer for. Now Jura has been inhabited for thousands of years and the population peaked at around 1300 in the 19th century before declining to its current number. Well that is slowly going back up. Time to hop off the big ferry and straight on to the wee one. 
It can only fit a handful of cars, and even though there was no space for us, they came right back to get us. Buy a ticket in advance, that's valid all day. Before you know it, you're there. Welcome to Jura. There's only one real road, and it hugs the east coast of the island. Most people live in the village of Craig House. That's where you find everything you could need. There's a wee shop with some essentials. There's a post office in there. There's a great pub, and of course, there's a distillery. Fortunately for me, I've got a pal who works for Jura Distillery, and he left me a wee gift to pick up. Get in touch before you head to Jura. Find out about booking on a wee tour while you're there. And it's time to check into our wee cottage, up the hill, high above the village, and reward ourselves with a dram of Jura 18. Then, of course, we stumble down the dark to Jura Hotel, for some delicious venison stew, and what we had intended to be a quiet night. But the locals were so friendly, we didn't want to leave. Eventually, around midnight, we finally got back for vital refueling. Now the next morning broke a little earlier than we would have liked, and our heads were a good bit fuzzier than we'd planned. But we had a mission for today, a 22 kilometre hike to the north of the island and back again with hopes of seeing the Cory Vrecken Whirlpool. That started with an hour's drive, where we saw a couple of cars, but dozens of deer plenty of birds, and what looked like some Hebridean sheep. Now be warned, passing places on the road get less and less common the further you drive. It is beautiful though, so try and enjoy it. Eventually you'll come to an old quarry to park in, with a sign giving some slightly worrying looking distances for the hike. The going's pretty good underfoot for the first section, and I don't regret wearing shorts for a minute, even in January in Scotland. I'm going to shut up now and just let you enjoy these views. That wee house is called Barn Hill, and in the 1940s, George Orwell rented it to write his novel 1984. He called this a very unget atable place, and it's hard to argue with him. And you can actually hire this yourself as a holiday home, but it's not cheap. Found a wee hut. Don't really know what it is. Got to... Yeah. Looks like a wee wood stove or boiler type thing outside. I don't know. Have we reached peak Airbnb? I don't really want to check in case somebody's actually in it. But this could just be a wee artist's hut because it's lovely. I mean, look at the view. The route has been pretty flat so far, but when you reach this remote farmhouse, follow the sign uphill. It might be two miles to go, but this is where the path gets boggy. Very, very boggy. Wait. 
Underwater geology between Scarborough and Jura causes a quarry wreck in Whirlpool, the third largest in the world. It's said that Scotland's creator deity, a giant blue hag called the Kaliach, washes or played at the start of every winter before spreading the blanket of white out over the tops of the mountains to dry. But there's another legend about the Corrie Vrecken, so time for a shortened version of the story. A dashing Norse prince called Brecken had fallen in love with the daughter of the chieftain of Jura, but before he could be married he had to complete an impossible task. He had to anchor his ship in a whirlpool for three whole days. He made three ropes, one of wool, one of hemp, and one made from hair donated by innocent maidens of Norway. The woolen rope snapped on the first day. On the second day, the hemp gave up. And just when his task was almost over, a single strand of hair in the rope snapped, and the entire third line unravelled. Somebody hadn't been quite as pure as they had claimed. Brecken was dragged to his doom, and ever since, this churning whirlpool would be known as Cory Vrecken, Gallic for the cauldron of Brecken. Unfortunately for us, the whirlpool was barely churning today. It's best seen on a spring tide, which is when there's a full or new moon, and that was still two days away. Still, it's about the journey, not just the destination, and we did see some wild goats down here. On the downside, we got a message from Calmac as we hiked home. Our ferry the next day had been cancelled, and we were booked on a 7am sailing instead. But there was a problem. That ferry leaves from Isla, and the earliest crossing from Jura wasn't until 8.30, so we had to rush back to the car, then to the cottage, and just made the last small Jura ferry in the pitch black. Rob, how seasick are you feeling right now? Oh, how, how terrified are you? It's swimming like this is... Uh... We're, we're, just, we're on the Jura ferry in the pitch black in a very turbulent sea. It's absolutely terrifying. Oh, it's rogue. It really is. So our trip to Jura didn't end the way we thought it was going to. Uh, we didn't get to go to the burn supper that we got invited to by the locals uh, in the village hall. Uh, I was due to sing a song. Don't know why they wanted me to sing a song. Uh, they never heard me sing actually, that's probably why. So I had to make the mad dash, the last ferry from Jura to Isla <coughs> in the pitch black, rolling about the sea, spend the night in the car because we had nowhere to stay on Isla and now it's half past six and we're waiting on the ferry back to the mainland. So anyway, even though the video didn't go the way that I expected it or hoped it to, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you'll, you'll like it, you'll subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Leave me a comment, let me know how it was and please share it with your friends. Um, so until the next time, we'll see what the next adventure holds for us. I've got a bit of a choppy ride home uh, ahead of me. So, slancher. <laughs>